Uh, hi there. Uh, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Uh, I decided to uh, just go ahead and keep recording because, like I said, it's been a little while, and figured I'd make at least make up for at least a little bit by doing a bit of a, a bit of a double recording, you know, a double upload. Not to, you know, peel the curtain back too much, but I usually do, you know, one video of one game, one video of another game, uh, well, you know, once a day. But yeah, you know, uh, plus. I don't know, I just kind of want to keep playing, you know? I don't want to wait like a whole last day to get back to this, uh, pretty ex this exciting mystery that seems to both have present day implications and implications for what happened back in the third case. The whole, cause, you know, we never actually figured out what the fuck, you know, actually happened then, so, you know. Yeah, so, we're doing a, we're, we're, we're doing a double t today, at, at least. And we're back at the, uh, back, back when debates pawn brokery, after getting Gina's, uh, papers. Here we are again, back at the Krispy Kreme, at the scene of the crime. Oh, hello. Now let's thrust these representa pa representation papers in Gregson's face and see what he makes of them. Yeah, fucking, look at these fucking papers, you motherfucker. I mean, I, I don't know why I'm so aggressive, it's not like I just dislike him. He, he's... He's a pretty cool dude, actually, but he's a, he's a grumpy guy. You kind of just want to stick it to it, stick in his face from time to time. Hello again, Inspector. Do you have a minute, please? Eh. Ah, uh, what is it? Fuck. What is it now? You should go home and get some rest. Here you are, Gregzy. Here are the representation papers. Your, your ladyship. Ha ho! Don't fucking squish your fish and chips, my dude. I don't believe it! How the devil did you get that stubborn little ragabash to sign that? I salute you! That is good work, that is! I can see you've been very busy here as well! How about some tea? It's a special blend designed to relieve fatigue! Ah, lovely. <laughs> well, uh, let's see now. Uh, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> I hardly feel tired at all. I'm fit as a fiddle, your ladyship. Would it be all right if we investigated the scene of the crime, then? Do as you please. You know where it happened. Through that door behind the counter. I, I'm never going to get a consistent voice for Gregson. I mean, I've never, like, he has a bit of an accent, I imagine, but not, like, super strong. So, I don't know, trying to find that balance is tricky. Again, also given the fact that I'm not a fucking trained voice actor, but... Uh, yes, storeroom. That's where I discovered Mr. Windebank. And Gina. Right, well, uh, I'll be getting back to business then. Will you be investigating the storeroom as well, Inspector? Yeah, if I'm perfectly honest, uh, we need to wrap this up before long. Can't afford to spend too much time on it. There's so many items to go through, it's taking forever. Even with the lads working around the clock. Which is a problem, because <laughs> there's another case that Yard needs to investigate urgently. That must be what Lord Strongheart meant by far more serious matters before. So what I'm saying is, don't get under my feet, sunshine! Come then! Let us not waste any time! Yeah, let's, let's fuck up some investigations, bro. What about this thing right here? This pot? There's the article letter here. And Mr. Windbank's notes, and... Hmm. What's this? It looks as though someone has left a little photographic print behind. Oh, look on the back. There's some writing. Is there? Ooh, show us, Susie. Show us. Let's see, 15th February, 10.30 p.m., Article deposited, one gentleman's overcoat. Load amount paid, one pound. 
Mention deadline, April 15th, 10.30 p.m. Gentleman's overcoat, pound for a pound? Clearly, it was a very fine coat. Is a pound a lot for a coat? I mean, I, I, I'm definitely not uh, up on the, uh, you know, conversion. Like, I know pound is like... Well, I, I, don't, know, I don't know if the, like, Britain uses the EU, the Euro anymore because of, you know, Brexit and stuff. But, like, the pound, I'm pretty sure, is, like, equivalent to a dollar in, you know, in the U.S., right? Like, a U.S. dollar. Like, it's, I think it's worth slightly more, so, like, then again, this is, like, 1890, 1860. I, well, it's, like, 1800s in England, so, like, I mean, maybe a pound was worth a lot more back then. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's still, I, I, can't, I, I don't know, I just don't feel like, uh, like, Something that's like a couple dollars, maybe. It's really a fine coat, but... Oh, here I am nitpicking. In fact, I think... Yes! This must be the ticket for the overcoat that Jenny redeemed yesterday. Right. Oh, so that's how she was able to get the coat in the first place, because she did have the ticket. Right. That that McGilded gave her, I assume. And I assume he gave her the watchword at some point? Still haven't clarified about that, how she was able to actually redeem it if she didn't have the watchword, but... And is still wearing, which belonged to McGilded. I would never expect the redemption ticket to be handwritten on the back of a photograph, though. It seems Mr. Winterbank just used whatever piece of paper he happened to have on hand, have to hand. But it's also, it's, a, it's another picture of a cat. But it's a photograph of a cat. It looks very familiar, doesn't it? I'm sure I've seen this exact same picture somewhere else recently. Yeah, right fucking here, dude. Yeah, turn around. Yeah, the same fucking picture. And it was used as also as a redemption ticket for something that was like a couple that was deposited like two days before then. Oh, yes, you're right. Very recently. It's the same as the one Jenny gave us earlier. Of course! I was forgetting that she gave us that print. Well, what are you waiting for then, Mr. Narahodo? G get it out! Alright, alright, let the fucking cogs turn, Jesus. Yes! They are exactly the same. Well, not exactly the same. I mean, they're basically the same, but I feel like the cat's expression is... Uh, slightly different, you know, it's like it's turned slightly to looking looking to the left as opposed to the one picture on the right where he's looking uh, in more of a forward direction. But either way, still close enough to be like, you know, obviously referencing the same thing. Hehe, <laughs> I got it! These two photographs hide an amazing secret! A, a secret? What does she mean? You must tell us, Iris, at once. <laughs> Do you really, really, really want to know? Yes. We need to tell you to tell us. You need to tell us all that you know about this pair of photographs. Obviously. Yeah, fucking talk, Iris. Jesus. So, Iris, about these two photographic prints. The one we found here on Mr. Winterbank's counter, and the one Gina gave us before. What is this amazing secret that you mentioned that hidden, that's hidden between these two identical prints? Well, they're not quite identical, but still. Actually, that's not quite right. Sorry? If you look carefully, the two prints aren't the same. Not exactly. Yeah, see? The cat's expression is turned, like, slightly to the left in the one photo. They're not? Oh, not either, fuck. <clears throat> Have another look at them now. Hmm. Can you see that they're just slightly different from each other? I, uh, I think so. It's very subtle, though. But what's the reason for the subtle difference between the two, the two prints? Ah, well, 
It's because they're a set, you see. Uh, no, I, I don't. This pair of photographs... It's meant to be used in a stereoscope. Everyone in London is raving about them at the moment. Ah, stereoscope. Why do I feel as though I've heard that word before recently? Because fucking Herlock explained it to you yesterday. The black magic or whatever. Oh, uh, yes. That's what Mr. Sholm showed us recently, of yesterday. You see? Uh, there it is. Uh, just over there. Ah, uh, yes, of course. That magical machine that makes pictures look almost real enough to touch. Yeah, I didn't know they had, like, stereoscopic 3D back in the fucking 1890s or whatever. <laughs> well, actually... It's quite possible to see the same depth in pictures even without one of those contraptions. What? Really? Do you know how a pair of flat put photographic prints can appear to have any depth in the first place? No, I have no idea. Oh, wonderful. Then I'll be able to tell you. She's over the moon. Oh, bless her. Should we let her explain, though? We really need to carry on investigating the scene. I, for one, simply have to know. I'm uh, sure, I guess. Uh, uh, why not? Have you ever considered, Runo? How our eyes see depth in the world around us? It, I'm pretty sure you need... Cones and rods and, and stuff, you know? Well, I just open them and, and it works. But the reason it works is because we have two eyes. Yeah, that too. You have two eyes with like all the proper eye-based things for them. If you only have one eye, your death perception is going to be not as good. Two eyes. Shocking. If you try closing just one eye at a time, I think you'll see straight away. What you see with your left eye, and what you see with your right eye, are ever so slightly different. You get a different view with each eye. Yeah, eyes are pretty fucking cool when you think about it. Yes. The position of objects seems to shift slightly. I mean, here I am fucking testing it out on myself because, of course, I am. Exactly! And in your head, your brain uses that shift to estimate death as it, as it merges the two views into one. That's how we can sense depth in everything we see. I mean, yeah, to be fair. Like, it is kind of hard, it is harder to, 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 to see depth, or perceive it, I guess, uh, when you're just looking with one eye. Ha! Ah, ah, my brain really is amazing, isn't it? It does so much without telling me. Yeah, that's, uh, that's humans for you. I mean, I, I, I love, uh, Ryanosuke's general lack of knowledge about his own body, and the doctors, and medicine in general. Ah! I think I see. So the pair of photographs consist of a left eye view and a right eye view. Is that right? Oh, well done, Susie! You're so quick! You basically stalked the hedgehog. So, if you can persuade your brain to merge the two pictures together in your head, <laughs> You'd be able to see. You'd be able to see depths in these prints. Yes, Runo, you're beginning to understand. And the stereoscope's function is to act as your brain and allow you to do just that. Yes, but as long as you have two images, two eyes, and one brain, you can actually do it yourself without needing to scare a stereoscope at all. You you can R really.
Let's try it. Let's see if you can view this pair of prints without the help of a stereoscope. Oh yes, I'm dying to have a go. Suzanne really loves this kind of thing. You need to be able to cross your eyes. That's the main thing. Can you both do that? Cross my eyes? I, I think I can. W watch me and see if you can copy. Oh god. That's slightly fucking cursed. I mean, I know it's just crossing her eyes. Like, anyone can do that, but... Uh, seeing her actual her model, her model actually do that is... It's a bit, it, it, it looks a bit weird. Make your eyes do this. Alright, let me try. Are you ready, Mr. Narahodo? There. How's that? Okay, Jesus Christ. Uh, I feel like I'm about to be fucking, uh, uh, initiated into a fucking weird-ass cult of cross-eyed people. Goodness. Wonderful! Now it's your turn, Bruno! The trick is to concentrate on looking at the bridge of your nose with both eyes at the same time. Not exactly an easy task when two people are staring at you cross-eyed. All right, well, that's enough practice. Now let's try looking at the prints. Start by staring at one print and slowly crossing your eyes. Uh. Am I supposed to be doing this, like me, the player? You should see two overlapping images like this. You try it now, Runo. I'm just gonna have to give it a try, I suppose. Uh, whenever I cross my eyes, I, I get all blurry though, and I can't see shit regardless. Uh, did the print split into two images for you? Now, the next step is to put the pair of prints side by side like this, and then to try crossing your eyes again. Okay, am I squinting or am I crossing my eyes? Uh. Oh wait, yeah, now I've done it. Yeah, now they're crossed, I can see. But again, it's blurry. I can't really make out anything clear. Okay, well, hopefully the game is going to do it for me because I, I feel like I'm maybe not doing this 100% right. They form a new single image in the center. Oh, yes! Ah, Mr. Arahoto, it works! I can see it in the middle now. I mean, yeah, because they put the two pictures together. It looks so real! Oh, I could look at it all day! Jesus, don't look at me like that all day, Jesus. I... Wouldn't advise that. Your eyes might start to hurt. Your turn, Runo! Pretend you're looking through the two pictures and slowly cross your eyes. Keep adjusting the position of your eyes until the two images overlap exactly in the middle. Like this, is it? Was I supposed to do something there? <laughs> okay, I feel slightly lost. Uh, and I think I, I would prefer that this is for just... Well... Okay, I, I, again, I feel like maybe I'm not doing it right. I, I'm turning to 3DS where you, the, the game has innate 3D. It's probably easier to see what they're getting at. There! You managed it! So now you know how stereoscopic images work. Well, I don't know who discovered it, 
but it really is quite extraordinary. So what do you think of these stereoscopic prints in, Reuno? Yeah, are you expecting me to do anything with this information, Iris? Game? Anyone? Like, is this gonna be like a, a pivotal point, like, later on in the trial? I'll be like, you need to cross your eyes and look at the fucking images and, and, and yeah, like... Because I feel like I'm gonna struggle with that, but, you know. Essentially amazing, but it isn't easy to get the knack of viewing them properly. No, some people find it easier than others. That's why contraptions like this exist, for the people who find it tricky. Oh, I recognize that. We saw one over there yesterday, didn't we? If I remember correctly, you press this little knob here, then set the pair of photographs in the stand at the back, and... It's still amazing, even though I know roughly how it works now. It just looks like the same fucking picture of a cat. I, I don't see any hidden secrets, cause I, or whatever. I mean, it's a very cute cat, so I can't complain. Well, London seems to, be, seems to agree with you. Stereoscopes are very popular at the moment. You can find one of these folding contraptions in lots of households in the capital currently. But if these little machines are so affordable, Surely there's no need to go around staring cross-eyed at pictures like you hate them. But it's much more satisfying to be able to see the effect with your own eyes. Well, I think so in any case. Stereoscopic pictures. I'd never even heard of them until yesterday. We certainly learned a lot about them. But I wonder if it's knowledge I'll ever actually need. Again, I'm, I, 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 I feel like this is going to be some pivotal point in later on in the trial where it is in fact going to come into play because they wouldn't go into all this depth explaining how fucking uh, how it's supposed to work if it didn't end up you know if it didn't matter at the end of the day right oh well i, I was still going back here that ledger that's open on the counter there that was a long fucking time for like one piece of like one evidence you know but oh well it must be an awful lot of work to keep track of all these hundreds of items in pawn. Wait, what? Oh. For some reason the fucking controller disconnected. I'm not sure what that was about. It's too much to think about. Better to sell it all and have a clear head if you ask me. But clearly Mr. Windebank was very careful when it came to the articles in his care. Yeah, he seemed like a thorough guy. Let's see. Around. Hey, it's a music box. We still have a disc that needs a music box. That's a music box. Do you have them where you come from, Bruno? Yes, but I've never seen one as large. This in Japan. Oh, well, this will be a treat. Shall we have a listen? Oh yeah, music box. I've heard, I, I've, I've heard these before. What do you think? Isn't it a pretty sound? That's a beautiful sound, yes, but... It's a little hard to enjoy when all the policemen in the room are giving you fierce looks. Oh, never mind that! If any of them say anything, I'll tell Gregory to have a word. Iris Wilson, <laughs> superintendent of Scotland Yard over here, am I right? What about this bad boy? This is that strange contraption that lets you see pictures of things as if they're right in front of your eyes. Oh, it makes you think. When Mr. Gle when Mr. Sholmes gleefully showed it to us yesterday, we were blissfully unaware that any of this was about to happen. Yeah, life comes at you fast, don't it, doesn't it, pal? I'm fairly sure this contraption was here yesterday as well. Here we are. No, I'm not confident I can get it closed again. Oh, yes! That's a folding stereoscope. Really? This is a stereoscope? Mr. Sholmes showed us a picture yesterday that you were supposed to be able to see in three dimensions. 
But for that, he used the great big contraption over there. Ah, well, that's for use in public houses and places like that. It contains a carousel with all sorts of pictures inside. But this little thing is a much simpler design for use at home. Ah, there are special shops selling, special shops selling prints that you can use in them. I have a little collection myself. I wonder if I can make money out of these in Japan. It would be keeping my toilet sparkling clean anyway. Oh, I see uh, a, a, an urge to clean toilets runs in the family. Let's see, what about this? These shelves are where the pawnbroker put, puts articles that have been forfeited on display for customers to buy. Yes, it's a, it's a really strange miscellany, isn't it? I mean, who'd buy this horse statue, for example? Well, sometimes you can find some real treasures among all the junk, you know. Are you alright, Runo? Oh, it's just, uh... Well, it looks like a collection of useless junk as a whole. But when you pick out individual things, you can't help wishing you owned them. Even that horse statue! Oh, that's exactly how the pawnbroker works! They're very clever. Hey, hey, so, what, you want to buy the, ho the, the, the horse statue, my dude? Well, too bad. He's fucking dead. So you can't buy, buy shit right now, but... Anyway, what about this? Ah! Look here! Oh, yes! A bullet hole. And I can still see the bullet hole as large in the wall. Presumably, Mr. Wind Windebake wasn't practicing with his revolver in his spare time. Yeah, I mean, he only had the one bullet. Ah, well, Mr. Sholmes likes to practice in his drawing room whenever he can. He's very patriotic like that. Sorry. Uh-oh. It's all there in the adventures of Sher Herlock Sholmes, you know. Isn't that right, Iris? Ah, did I write something like that? Uh, partly in jest, perhaps. In jest? Why would he ingest bullets, though? Well, he doesn't do it often. <laughs> it is quite a dangerous pastime. He doesn't do it often. He shouldn't even do it once. Forget that for now, Runo. Let's examine this bullet. Maybe we can see its ballistic markings. After all, ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun, you know? What's that around the bullet hole? Is it blood? I hope it is not... Windebank's blood? Hmm. A suspicious red stain on the calendar. Aha! I may well be able to help with that. What? There's nothing like a sight of blood to get the blood pumping, is there, Runo? Ugh. I have a feeling I'm not as bloody-minded as you, Iris. I'm afraid the sight of blood makes my blood run cold. There you have it, you see. When it comes to blood, we're all different types. Yes, what a scientific observation. So you need this. Oh no. What is that scary looking thing? Hmm. Hurley and I haven't actually come up with a name for it yet. But as soon as you see it in action, you'll understand what it does. Watch. Oh. Holy dooly, it turned the blood green! Now it's Ecto Cooler! <laughs> oh! The color of the blood stain has changed! There! Does it make sense now? Uh, yes, I think I'm starting to understand. Good! It works on the principle that different people have different types of blood, you see! Yes! How wonderful! The chemical it fires combines with the blood and makes it change color. So you can identify whose blood it is that you're looking at in a flash. Oh, what a fabulous invention, Iris. You basically discovered fucking uh, forensic blood analysis, blood analysis like 50 years before it was probably ever a thing. Isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> I bet Chili would say it's bleeding great. So um, whose blood are we looking at then? Well, all the chemical does is turn the blood a different color, so... 
Just find someone whose blood turns the same color and you'll know who it belongs to. In a flash. Well, dude, it's not like you can go around getting people's blood samples, like, just, uh, uh, you know, off the cuff. It's more like two flashes, really, um, isn't it? One flash or two? This could well turn out to be a very valuable clue. So we must make a note of it in the court record. Okay, so maybe it's not like full on forensic ana forensic analysis, but uh, you know, it's, it's it's pretty close. Let's keep testing and adding the results of any other blood analysis to the portfolio. As long as I have reagent left, sure. Yeah, you're a regular in the sky, you are. Hey, is there, is there still more? Green blood. It just seems wrong somehow. Oh, there are all sorts of different colors. They're pretty pinks and purples too, you know. Why, if you play the game Danganronpa, everyone has pink blood in that game. It's adorable. Like I said, everyone's blood is different. I wonder what color my blood would turn out. Actually, I uh, don't want to know. Okay, well, I think that's everything in this part of Windabanks. Still can't examine that human skull, though. Wait, can I, like, go deeper? What about this broken glass? I uh, think I'll be able to examine that. Okay, yeah, can we actually like, go deep deeper in? <laughs> Beyond that door, it's a storeroom, isn't it? Yes, and that's where I saw that dreadful scene last night. Though, th th through the little window in the door. Yeah, we saw our boy Windebank and Gina holding a gun uh, as one does. Mr. Windebank, face down on the floor, with Gina beside him. Uh, do you feel like a pawnbroker when you get shot down as he falls face down on the floor? I was trying, I was trying to come up with a clever line, but to, to reference the song, face down. Uh, face down on the mat. Oh, I definitely, I bet it hurt for a fucking Windebank, am I right? <laughs> Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I, get, I get off. I get, I get tangent. Get off on tangents. As the accused, accused's legal representative, you have the right to examine the scene, Mr. Narahodo. We must make a thorough investigation. Yes, of course, and uh, we will. Behind that door, that's that's the real scene of the crime. Don't worry. If there are clues in there, I'll find them. So can I go? Can we move? Okay, there we are. Here we are, 16th of April, in Windebank storeroom. Ah, oh, poor Iris. She's clamped up completely. I guess she's not as bloodthirsty as she made out to be. Iris is bound to find this difficult. Maybe we shouldn't have the 10 year old uh, accompanying us right in the middle of a crime scene where someone was literally murdered, uh, like like right in front of her, or well, not in front of her like as it happened, but she, you know, you can see the outline of the body and everything, you know, it's, it, I imagine it's a little, it would be a little tense for a 10 year old girl even if she is like a super genius or whatever. After all, Mr. Windebank's life was taken in this very in, taken in this very room only last night. Oh hi. Again. Ah Did you just fucking teleport out of the room? Wait, it's Fetra! What is it now, sunshine? You took one look at me and tried to run away. You think a Scotland Yard inspector would run away from some jumped up little defense lawyer, do ya? 
I just, uh, well, uh, I've never seen her ladyship looking like that before, is the thing. I didn't know what to say to her. So you weren't running away from me, you were running away from a ten-year-old. Hey, I mean, it happens to the best of us. I'm afraid this is all a little much for young Iris. Again, maybe we should have told her to maybe to step back, to step back or stay, you know, stay out while we were doing the investigating. But, you know, I guess we didn't think of that beforehand. <sighs> Some gentle reassurance might go a long way, perhaps, Inspector. Eh. <laughs> um, ahem. Don't, um, <laughs> uh, don't trouble yourself unduly, your ladyship. I mean, <laughs> at least you're not dead, are you? <laughs> Bro, that's not fucking helpful in the slightest. I don't think that went very well. Why? <laughs> Look, I'm in the middle of an investigation here, sunshine. And I told you not to get under my feet. And we have investigating to do ourselves. Yes. I'd like to hear more of what the so that socially inept inspector has to say. Yeah. Oh, Hurley. And inquire into how Mr. Sholm's operation is going. Okay, well, that, uh, that all sounds like a jolly good fun for some jolly fun people, but eh, I don't know. Again, that fucking s s lecture about stereoscopic prints honestly ran a little long, so I'm not sure if I can squeeze in a, this, whole, this whole investigation and conversation sequence uh, in, 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 so I think we're going to have to deal with, deal with that next episode. Oh man, fucking Gregson, you want to try, like, learning some people skills or how to talk to children like Jesus dude <sighs> you're still you're 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 an odd one Mr. Gregson <laughs> but anyway we'll tussle with all of these questions and more in the next episode but uh, until then 